Romney and Gingrich are both campaigning heavily. Obviously, Romney's way ahead in the polling there. A new Quinnipiac survey shows Romney at 43 percent among likely Republican primary voters. Gingrich trailing behind 29 percent. The latest national Gallup poll is a different story, showing Gingrich Romney virtually tied for the lead among registered Republicans' choice for the nominee. Let's talk about it now with uh, CNN Palooka contributor Ari Fleischer and Democratic strategist uh, Cornell Belcher. Um, what do you make of this, the, the battle in, in Florida? Uh, first of all, how do you think it looks for, for Romney and for Gingrich? Well, Anderson, I think it's looking great for Mitt Romney. He's really, because of the debates, and that's really been the driver for all the primary elections so far, has opened up a lead after his big South Carolina loss. Uh, I think Mitt Romney is going to win Florida by nine percentage points. It's going to be a good size win. I don't think it's going to be as big as some of those other polls indicate because of those nagging conservative questions about Mitt Romney. But it's going to be a very good night for Mitt Romney in Florida tomorrow. Cornell, a smart move for, for Gingrich to uh, basically seed Nevada and, and Michigan to Romney or not put a lot in there? Well, it, no, I, I think it is a smart move. When you look at the, the, the long picture and when you look at the, the, the money and organization really matter early on. One of the beauties about, about the Obama campaign early on, how we were able to stand in against the establishment candidate early on, was that we took that grassroots movement, that grassroots energy, and turned it into fundraising. I think if, if Newt Gingrich can, can turn sort of his grassroots sort of conservative Tea Party network into fundraising, and he can match uh, Mitt Romney where he's being outspent right now, what, Florida, four or five, five to one, uh, and, and match him in, in those later states, I think he has a chance at this, and particularly when it, when it, moves, when it, moves, when it moves south. I mean, look. If Mitt Romney didn't like South Carolina, wait till he gets a load of Alabama, Mississippi, Tennessee, Georgia, Texas, etc. So I think it's a smart move for, for Newt Gingrich, and he's playing the long he's playing the long game here. And, and I think it makes some sense, especially when you look at the national polls, where he's basically tied. Are you agree with that? Yeah, there's another deeper reason why too, especially in Nevada. Four years ago, Nevada Republican primary turnout heavily, heavily Mormon. 28%, the bar largest group was Protestant. 26% of the voters were Mormon. Voted 95% for Mitt Romney. So what you're going to see is the opposite in the South, where there are questions have been raised about can he do well in the South. And Arizona also has a significant Mormon population. 11% of the voters in Arizona's primary four years ago were Mormon. A clear Romney advantage there. So it is smart for Newt to narrow the playing field. But no matter what, Newt's going to have a very difficult February. Mitt Romney is about to have a very good February because of the states that vote in February. But then it does come down to March, and where Mitt Romney remains vulnerable is if and when this becomes a one-on-one -on -one contest. Because, what I mentioned before, those nagging doubts that conservatives have about his core convictions. So Santorum staying in, and if Newt Gingrich stays in, it helps Romney. If one of those two were to drop out, then you get a different type of race. I also think you could flip it. If Newt Gingrich dropped out, I would predict to you that Rick Santorum would actually become a very formidable one-on-one -on -one candidate against Mitt Romney. Uh, and, and no doubt Santorum is hoping that might happen. Cornell, it looks like <laughs> Romney may be making big gains. If you look at some of these poll numbers with the evangelicals, even with Tea Partiers uh, in, in Florida, leaving aside the actual vote count, what numbers do you think the Obama campaign are going to be watching tomorrow night? Well, you know, I think we'll, we'll I mean, Florida's an awfully, awfully important state. I think we're more concerned about sort of what, what's happening with independent uh, voters in some of these battleground states. And we see some of the national polls showing that, that, that this battle is actually hurting Romney with some of these independent voters. The evangelical numbers is fascinating to me because when you look at that 20, sort of partisanship aside, this is a pollster, when you look at how how Newt Gingrich was able to run up a 20-point advantage among evangelicals in South Carolina. The fact that, that, that he's now sort of, sort of splitting evangelicals evenly with, uh, with Mitt Romney in Florida is, is a really interesting number. And some of, sometimes I think there's, there's outliers in, in some of the internal numbers. That is a really interesting number. If that number is true, if he can compete with evangelicals, with, with Newt Gingrich, it, it, this, this race is over. So I, I looked at, for him not to sort of win Florida by, by 14 or 15 points, although Fred Thompson came on and said, you know, if he doesn't win it by double digits, sort of setting that expectation game. But, but, but look to see if that evangelical, that evangelical number holds up, because if that number holds up for Mitt Romney, it, it, it's a very good, good storyline for Mitt Romney. Uh, we we got to leave it there. Ari Fleischer, Cornell Belcher, guys, thank you very much. Fascinating stuff. Thank you. A uh, quick reminder, obviously, we're going to bring you the complete coverage tomorrow night.